My name is Rebecca Quaite and I'm the Medical Director at the Centre for Breast Health here at Exeter Hospital. I'm a fellowship trained breast surgeon and I specialise in uh, breast health and with a focus on breast cancer care. Breast cancer is a very common disease and affects a lot of women in the United States and men. Um, about 250,000 women are going to be diagnosed with breast cancer and those numbers have crept up each year. About 2,500 men are also diagnosed with the disease and unfortunately well over 40,000 women will die of the disease and around 600 men will die as well. It's so common that one in eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer in their lifetime. But thankfully there have been so many advances in treatments and tools used to diagnose this disease that survival is excellent. It's a cancer that most women will recover from and continue on to live happy and healthy lives. Breast cancer screening is an area that has caused a lot of confusion for patients. Um, the strongest tool we have in our toolbox to screen women for breast cancer is mammography. And there are a lot of guidelines out there as to who to screen and when to screen, what age to screen at. And there are many different institutions that have issued guidelines as to what is the best way to do this. At the Centre for Breast Health at Exeter Hospital, the guidelines that we use for screening women with breast cancer are in line with those from the American College of Radiology and the American Society of Breast Surgeons. We all recommend that women of average risk start screening with mammograms at the age of 40 and to do this annually. At the age of 25, we recommend that women undergo a risk assessment with their providers. So what this means is talk to your doctor about your breast cancer uh, family history. Talk about other risk factors such as hormonal factors whether you've ever had a biopsy that shows some atypical cells in the breast, whether you've used hormone replacement therapy or some other type of hormones, or had any sort of childhood radiation to the chest. A lot of these factors in one's medical history can factor into the role um, of breast cancer high-risk screening, and it can improve the benefits of high-risk screening for some of these women at a higher risk than average. If you discuss your risk with your doctor, uh, there are various models and tools that providers can use to assess lifetime risk. And some women may not even realize that given all of their health history, their lifetime risk may be above 20%. Those women are eligible for high-risk screening. So high-risk screening can involve additional supplemental imaging tests beyond mammography. Uh, the most common one of which we use here is breast MRI. Breast MRI is another tool that is highly sensitive for detecting invasive cancers, but it does have its downsides, and so it's not done in everyone. But women who are high risk, and especially women who have dense breasts, could have a lot of benefit from having the MRI. A breast MRI can image the breasts in a different way than a mammogram. It uses contrast to assess whether there are tumors within the breast, and sometimes these can be hiding in tissue that is dense that may not be immediately apparent on the mammogram. Thankfully here at Exeter Hospital, we use 3D mammography, which is also known as 3D tomosynthesis, and that can help to scroll through the dense tissue, if you will, and has certainly improved the sensitivity of mammography compared to the 2D images of old. But the MRI can go a step further. So in women who are high risk, they may have a greater benefit from the MRI. Along the lines of family history, women can be high risk based on family history. And sometimes this may not be immediately apparent until you discuss with your doctor who has had various malignancies and not just breast or ovarian cancer, but other malignancies as well in the family. Uh, if it's found that there are a lot of folks who've had cancer in the family, then there could be a syndrome in that family that also can increase risk for breast cancer. It is important to assess these patients and determine whether genetic testing might be helpful. Some women will be found to have genetic mutations that increase the risk for breast cancer. These mutations are not common and in only 5-9% to of the time do we find a BRCA mutation in a breast cancer patient. 
but nevertheless they can be very important if they're found in terms of management of both breast cancer and management of screening if someone doesn't have breast cancer. Women with a BRCA mutation would benefit from earlier screening, notably with an MRI starting at the age of 25. And those women will also undergo mammograms at a much earlier age, on the order of 30 or even 35 in some cases. Preventing breast cancer can be a challenge. A lot of the risk factors are out of our control. A lot of it is based on your hormonal history, your exposure to hormones or lack thereof. So nulliparity, women have a higher risk if they haven't had uh, children, breastfeeding, uh, hormone replacement therapy use, the age that you had your period, the age that you went through menopause. A lot of these things we can't quite change. There are some things we can change, however. The most important factor when trying to prevent breast cancer is lifestyle. Obesity is a high risk for developing breast cancer and for developing a breast cancer recurrence after a patient has been treated. Smoking can have a low association with risk as well and so does excessive alcohol intake and obviously the use of exogenous hormones. Um, what we counsel patients is to exercise, follow a healthy diet, lots of fruits and vegetables and natural whole foods. And that's one of the best things you can do to help prevent a breast cancer. It's important to practice self-breast awareness. A lot of women find self-breast examination pretty challenging because breast tissue can come in different uh, textures and some women are so dense that they feel lumps quite frequently and quite commonly. What I counsel patients is that it's important to understand what your breasts feel like. They may be dense, and lumpy, but if you can get a sense as to what is normal for you, then you may be more inclined to detect something abnormal if it were to occur. Of course, most breast cancers are found on imaging. Thankfully, we find breast cancers typically when they're small and when the stage is early. But once in a while, women will find a breast cancer on their own exam, and that's why it's important to recognize the signs of cancer. This can be a lump, or an indentation in the breast that wasn't there before, redness of the breast, a nipple that's becoming more flattened compared to how it usually is, nipple discharge, cracking or scaling of the nipple that was never present, coderage, which is a phenomenon that can happen where the breast swells and gets a stipple-like appearance, and on rare occasions, pain. Breast pain often is not a sign of breast cancer. But if it's a new pain that tends to be in one location, it's worth discussing with your doctor. If an abnormality is detected on a screening mammogram, you could expect to have to come back for what's called a diagnostic mammogram. That's where the radiologist will take additional pictures and read those images in real time. Often they will also perform an ultrasound at that time. The ultrasound can look at the breast tissue in a different way and acquire images that may reveal more information about what the tissue looks like at that location. From there, sometimes a biopsy is recommended. Biopsies are typically done with a needle. Usually, you can expect bruising from a biopsy with a small incision. You may or may not feel a small lump after the biopsy is performed, which is also typically normal. Once the pathology results come back, this can take a few days. During that time, it can be very anxiety provoking because breast biopsies are done to rule out breast cancer. But once the results come in, then after that, patients are usually brought in if there's a breast cancer diagnosis to meet with our oncology team. Here at Exeter Hospital, we utilize a multidisciplinary approach where we have a medical oncologist, a radiation oncologist, and a breast surgeon who all work together. The earlier breast cancer is diagnosed, the greater the chance that less treatment would be needed. The earlier it is diagnosed, it would be a lesser stage when perhaps women would not require chemotherapy or require radical nodal surgery, like a complete adrenal node dissection. And obviously survival could be improved when diagnosed at earlier stages. Breast cancer is a very treatable disease and when caught early, survival can be excellent. Don't wait, get your mammogram today. If you're above the age of 40, have a mammogram annually. 
If you think you're high risk of breast cancer, talk to your doctor about your risk factors. Come to the high risk clinic, get an assessment, and find out if any other supplemental screening is right for you. Many women do very well and become survivors and thrivers after having had breast cancer.